Uh, the arrival of COVID has not only caused untold suffering and left political and economic systems floundering, it has also brought us to a frank confrontation with our own finitude. It is now undeniable that the world is beset with multiple crises, economic, ecological and social. Plague, injustice and disaster are our new normal. Clearly, the crises we face are existential, threatening not just ways of life, but life itself. However, our society is dominated by aspirations toward unlimited economic growth, extension of human life and preservation of youth, at least for those who can afford it. These tendencies can be identified as constitutive of neoliberalism, consumer economics or postmodernism, or postmodernism as in Frederick Jameson. Their common feature of interest is an aspiration towards a spurious infinity, constantly making more money, living forever or remaining young forever. My first claim is that this pursuit of infinity has also resulted in irrevocable environmental damage, plutocracy and an atomized contemporary culture. The planet is showing the consequences of its being treated as a standing reserve of resources to be extracted. To be blunt, our infinite desires stimulated by consumer capitalism cannot be reconciled with our finite world without its eventual destruction. My second claim is that heavy metal culture reflects an existentialist outlook which fundamentally recognizes and is compelled toward finitude, death, destruction and decay. This can be seen across all of its subgenres, cultural practices and symbolism, and has been a continuing thematic feature since its inception in the late 1960s. A few immediate examples include metal's fascination with the color black, uh, skulls and gravestones, its persistent focus on nuclear war, ecological collapse and social unrest, and any number of band names such as death, mega death or dying fetus. Some metal subgenres are more literal in their approach to finitude than others, uh, death metal is fittingly the most obvious, regularly featuring graphic descriptions of bodily violence in particular, effectively identifying the multiplicity of potential deaths that await us. Doom metal, known for its melancholy atmosphere and slow pace, focuses more on uh, deixis, the act of pointing towards death and its inevitability rather than explicitly describing it. Uh, this can be seen in the first uh, eponymous Black Sabbath song released in 1969. Uh, Maschiandaro's discussion of this song argues that Deixis is the essential mechanism of metal's frequently appreciated Nietzschean spirit, which, quote, locates itself as a beyond within representation, thus attempting to embody the greatest beyond of all our own non-being. Even glam metal, expanded by bands such as Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue, uh, is laden with references to death and destruction, often centering on the bodies of the performers themselves. Born of the excessive 1980s, these groups stretched hedonism to its breaking point with multiple fatalities and near-death experiences in their wake. It might seem odd to contend that metal culture, itself a product of the culture industry and often criticized for its furthering of hegemonic white masculinity, might provide some insight into global crises. Surely metal can only negate the institutions and forces which surround it with, with its vociferous ire, ending ultimately in nihilism. Critics would suggest this is demonstrated in the misanthropy and violence of the 1990s Norwegian black metal scene, which featured murder and arson. However, I maintain that metal culture, far from evincing lack of belief, represents what could be described as a resentful disillusionment. Merely through decrying the state of the world, many metal artists reveal their commitments to ideals such as ecological harmony, political justice and humanism. Police brutality, nuclear programs and environmental destruction, to name but a few, have been criticised by metal musicians for 50 years. For the world to be in this fallen state, according to metal and its progenitors, there must be a place we have fallen from, an ideal to yearn for or to return to. My third claim is that metal in its existentialist concern, has repeatedly drawn attention to global crises throughout its existence and continues to do so. It must be stressed that the persistence of metal culture and its consistent fascination with finitude has coincided with the emergence and deepening of the crisis we now face today. The culture and the first strains of the modern uh, emerge, sorry, the culture emerged in the late 1960s and early 1970s alongside the consumer economy, the OPEC crisis and the first strains of the modern environmentalist movement and responded particularly fervently to the heightening of nuclear tension in the 1980s when the world's demise seemed particularly imminent. 
The implications of these claims are profound. Heavy metal may be read as a manifestation of global existential anxiety and its insistent indication towards our own demise now more than ever must be taken with the utmost seriousness. For an apocalyptic end game to be averted, we must somewhat ironically look towards a culture that revels in cataclysm as one of its key themes. Metal's emphasis on finitude is a direct counter to the hegemony of infinite growth and life which have brought us to the brink of collapse.